Stand clear of the closing doors, please. What up, son? What up? Grind and pivot. Louis Max, Queens, New York. Today I have the pleasure of being with an artist, a body painting artist for that fact. He is one hell of a guy. I want you to check this guy out. He's going to tell us what it's all about. His name is Andy Gollum. Andy, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good. How are you? Hanging in there. So for people listening and that might not know you, how how did you get into body painting and tell us what that all about? It's all about. I've been body painting for about 15 years. Um, shortly before I started painting people, I was painting many different objects. So I painted everything from cars to rocks to shoes to tables to clothes. And uh, then when I painted mannequins, I had the idea of painting people. And then when I painted people, I realized that the um, the spirit of the person um, would be like sort of like the subject of the painting. So I found it very uh, an interesting way to kind of connect with people through this um this other part of my mind where when I create them, my, my, I'm more open. And, and so it just created like really cool work and, and really fun experiences. How did that first experience go? It went very well. I mean, I was actually painting, um, I was actually at art expo about 15 years ago, I think. And, uh, I told the person next to me, the booth next to me that I was interested in painting a person. And then he was like, I can get someone. And the next day I painted a girl wearing, a bikini and not a bikini, uh, like a like a little skirt and a bikini top or something, a tube top, and uh, everybody was so interested in the painting, uh, and it felt like it took over Art Expo, and and nobody was really interested in the art around the walls, and they were just sort of like following this girl around like she was the Pied Piper, and I just found that it was an interesting thing that I tapped into like this source of power. So then I um I started doing more of them, more of them like in studio, and then I started doing a lot of painting in the streets, and things just kept uh, continually uh, evolving from there. Yeah. So when you decided, uh, you you do a lot of painting in public. So when you basically decide to paint the body in public, you know, how how is that received? Have you ever been arrested? Is it is it actually legal? Give us a little background on what it takes to paint a body in public nude well i was painting this one girl in a studio and it was i I remember the painting was really nice and the photographer who was taking pictures of him i looked at the pictures and i was like i don't know why but like this this these photos are just not capturing what's going on here and then i was like i really want to share this directly with the public that it wasn't about like um you know the images themselves as much as it was the experience and the transformation that was taking place. I thought it was something important. I wanted to share. I started doing it all around the city. And, um, at, at, you know, I was kind of harassed by cops here and there, pushed around here and there. I didn't really know what I was allowed to do or not allowed to do. Um, but then like at some point I just, I really don't think I was pushed around too much because I think that, um, I kept pushing back when they would push me around. One time I was in Times Square, just when Times Square became a pedestrian plaza. It was actually like whatever, probably around 2011. And, and the cops really were harsh and they're giving me a hard time and telling me to move and all. And I was just going back and forth and I knew that they didn't have anything on me because they were just spending too much time talking to me. So I went home that night and I called Ron Kuby, who's like a the radio attorney, talk the attorney, right? Yeah. And I didn't expect him to be interested in my story, but he was very interested in my story. He wrote a letter to the to, to the New York uh New York City, I guess the police department, and he said, Please don't hassle my um you know, my client, what he's doing, you know, the, the city doesn't need the economic hit type of thing, he said. He referred to some of it in these economic times. And then he also said that the work that Andy's doing is, is the girls are not even nude. They're, they're wearing bottoms and you can be fully nude in New York City for purposes of, of art. And I didn't know that. And so then at some point I started painting nude people. And then it was in 2011 that, um, we all got arrested for, uh, public lewdness, even though what we were doing was legal. 
Wow, that's amazing. So 2011, you're getting arrested for public lewdness, on much like uh, the porn theaters back in the 70s were getting hassled left and right. Right. And it's a funny thing because for me, like I never really was that interested in nudity as, as a, like, um, I don't know, like I just, I was, I, I wasn't around nudism at all when I was growing up. I just sort of process it the way that most people do where people would just sort of make jokes about new, new, new nudists. Like, you know, they'd say things like how come all the people that are, you know, that are new to the ones that, you know, no one wants to see and this type of thing. <laughs> right. Of course. Of course. And you mean those magazines, right? The magazines you'd find and there'd just be a lot of like all sorts of ages left and right and nobody that you really wanted to check out as opposed to Playboy and, and Penthouse. Yeah, I think so. And I think that really what it was is that people, you know, we're in this environment where people are always using uh, nudity as, as a way to you know, sell product, to get people excited and turned on. And, and you know, and, and uh I would consider it to be like an exploitive kind of environment that we live in. And then there was this other environment, which is sort of, you know, more of a, like a pure environment where people are just our human beings and what they are. And that, you know, it, it just found to me like this really interesting connection because while a person was exposing their, their skin to me when I would paint them, it felt to me like they were exposing their spirit to me. And that the, the connection between the body and the soul is actually very strong. And then if that's true, which I believe it is, then as we're walking around, not just fully clothed, but fully clothed with a message like I'm wearing this because I'm sophisticated or I'm wearing this because I'm this type of person, that all of those things actually uh, are bury our spirit and, and, and disconnect us from other people. That if it's, it's a matter of being, you know, vulnerable is sort of the natural state. Yeah, yeah, well put. I mean, what do you think the distinction between like nudity and sexuality is? I mean, touch on that a little bit because I think that's kind of what you're getting at. It is. Um, I would say that the, I, I think that the idea of sexuality is considered to be something dirty. That, that, that sexuality is something that we should not show it when we're doing our normal day and then when when the lights are out you know in a private room then we could sort of let out all of these horrible perversions that are sort of unavoidable and that we're sort of stuck with and i think that the idea of sexuality being perverted is is largely because of the fact that we're in a such a consumer based advertising marketing environment that is exploiting people constantly and it's actually exploitation itself that is really the the ugliness and not the the sexuality. The sexuality is just not only a, a part of ourselves, but that our sexuality is not just connected to nudity, but it's also connected to love. It's also connected to procreation. It's 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 really at the it's it's part of the reproductive process. It shouldn't be seen in a shameful way. Do you know anything about the history? You know, I mean, I'm sure when like body painting actually became an art form, because I think human beings have probably been painting themselves for centuries, right? That's probably true. I have sort of avoid getting too much information about things because I like to um, kind of have my own natural process. So uh, I allow my own desires of where I want to go next as an artist to define my way. And I, I try not to be trying to get too much information about the uh the context, whether it's historical or cultural, whatever. Interesting. You ever receive uh, hate mail from from religious groups or the like? I haven't, but I'll give you my PO box number afterwards if you want to send me something. <laughs> I, I I gave you that one. I gave you that one. That's good. That's good. Uh, let's see. Let's see if anybody uh, anybody's listening out there. So you paint, you know, you body paint large groups of people. What's the largest group that you've ever painted, and uh, how long did that take? Well, I mean, we've done these big events and the largest event that I had, I mean, I created this event called, um, body painting day. Uh, we've done body painting day eight years in New York City since, uh, 2014 included. We even did it, um, last year, uh, in, in while everything was in such lockdown and we did it this year as well. We're going to do it again next year. So we did eight in New York. We did three in San Francisco, three in Amsterdam, one in Brussels, one in Berlin and one in Zurich. So we've done a lot of these body painting days 
The biggest one was 70 artists and 90 models in New York. Wow. That's, that's incredible. What, what, which country is the most open, excited about body painting? And, you know, and, and, and on the conversely, which one might be the most resistant if there is? Well, when I did it in, um, Amsterdam, we did it at this plaza called Museum Plain and they have all the, it, all of their big museums are all in one area. And then they have this giant, um, field and surrounding it. So we did it there. And that was the only place that we didn't have any barricades up separating the, the people that were watching from the, uh, the painters and, and the models. Um, and, and people who just really relaxed and really open to it and really just saw it as an artistic experience. Maybe largely because we were in museum plane, maybe largely because it's sort of Amsterdam where they, they just, there's just a lot of, um, you know, civil liberties is, is, is very, very, you know, big there. Sure. So let's go back a little bit. Take us back. Uh, you grew up, uh, in upstate New York. Uh, fill us in. Good childhood. What was a, what was a real pivotal moment where art kind of took its, took its way? Uh, and were there other things you were into as far as music and sports? I did a lot of art in middle school, which was mostly like, um, like based on comic book stuff that I was reading at the time. But I think it was really high school that I really was like getting into it. And it was hard for me to go sit through all day, um, in school just for six hours listening to people talk about stuff. I mean, some of it I found interesting, but I, the idea of just sitting there and just looking at the teacher all day. So I was going to school and I was just drawing continually the whole day. It allowed me to process the information I was getting from the, the classes. I didn't mind the classes so much. I just minded having to just sit there like that. So I was doing a lot of art in high school, had a lot of energy. I think I was very creative. I really, I really just, it was like sort of like, it was just a really good place for me as far as my, my expression and my mind and, you know, and everything like that. Yeah, I, I, I liked, um, I definitely liked sports. I mean, I really liked playing football. Um, never joined a team with it. Uh, did different sports and soccer or whatever, you know, I'm like an okay athlete. I was def definitely very like, I don't know, like sports sort of triggered like a very aggressive part of me, um, which maybe shuts down the sort of creative side of me. So I, I think that I consider myself like kind of like an aggressive person. And I think that there's a power to that. Maybe like when I do the body painting in Times Square and stuff like that, having that aggression, that sort of you know, masculine approach to things, I think has a real value and, 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 and serves well. I think it also can sort of stunt the, the, you know, the, the spiritual elevation and, and, and that kind of thing. And I think that stuff's more like on the feminine, uh, you know, side and really sort of being open to, to feeling, um, sad or lonely or, or, you know, as you process things, you know, feeling the hurt that, that life gives you if you're open to it. I don't know. I, I think that the art really, it always wanted to, I was always loyal to the art. Whenever it was a situation that came up, art would be the thing that I would use to uh, maybe get me out of it. Or if people wanted me to get a real job and make money, um, I was like, okay, let's try that. But then the art was like, you're not going anywhere. Right. How about music? What What did that play? Did that play a big part? You know, it's growing up, I mean, the, the, the album that I, that I listened to growing up that, that was my center of music actually was Billy Joel, the stranger. It was like everything started there. Mm -hmm. And then about, I don't know, probably like 15 years ago, something like that. I don't really remember. Maybe less than 15. I, uh, I, I became a, a huge Bob, Bob Dylan fan and, uh, really just studied him listen to his interviews, listen to a lot of his music. And so he became my new center of music. So I, I think that I, I'm more, I consider myself as a painter, more of a line person than a color person. You know, some people might disagree. I told that to people and they're like, they disagree, mm -hmm. but that's how I see myself. I feel like I could just draw all the time and, and then coloring. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm more interested in that. I think in terms of music, I think words are the, are the, the lines and, uh, the, the instruments are the color. So I think that I like the, I like the, the words of music the most. So 
to me, that's like the, the dry idea. And of course, it's the, the music itself that gives it the life. And that's the same thing with painting. So I just, maybe because of my own connection with line and drawing faces, that is my connection with music is very much with these like really great lyricists. Yeah, that makes sense. So then Dylan does make, uh, let me make a good point of that. So that does make sense. Uh, you painted your car one time, right? Yeah, I painted a whole bunch of cars. Yeah. Tell, tell us, how did you get into that? I guess it was just when I was painting objects, but it was a funny story because what happened, actually what happened was my, I, my parents sold me like their, they had a Lexus and, you know, and, and so, uh, my, my, uh, they sold me the Lexus. And then one time my brother came in and he's much more of a capitalist than I am. <laughs> and, um, and he came over and he was sort of making fun of me for driving around with the Lexus. He was like, yeah. so you finally switched teams. You're one of us now, Andy. You got, you got this Lexus. I never thought you, so he was just giving me a hard time. And then the next time I saw him, the, the entire Lexus was painted with blue faces everywhere. So I, I think it, I think it was like, I think you probably hit a nerve. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing that you've ever painted? Well, I, I would say that, um, I was painting a lot of, uh, when I first started painting in Times Square, I was definitely painting, um, basically all females and, and, and the vast majority of them. I mean, they were attractive. And, and then when, after we got arrests and, you know, and, and, and we won those battles, um, the, uh, one of the final battles I was working with the, believe it or not, the New York State, um, New York Civil Liberties Union, NYCLU, which is part of the ACLU. And they negotiated with the city so that I would be able to do full nude body painting during the day because they were creating restrictions on me where I can only do it at night. That's another story, but we'll just leave it at that for this interview and all. And anyway, um, after they got it where I won that battle and I could paint people, they, they, um, they came back to me and they said, is this just for females or males also? And I was like, let's not push it too much. Let's just get females and leave it alone. And they said, no, I think we should get it for males too. And then I said, okay. And then they went to the city and they said, he can paint fully nude males as well. And the city said, yeah. And then I was like, oh my God. And I was like, I'm going to paint fully nude men in, in the public street. And even though like, I'm not really into guys like that, I, I was like, this was just such an opportunity to sort of, you know, represent the, the human, you know, human male nudity in, in a way. And I think that the way that people perceive male nudity is very much like, um, in a predatory way, you know, and it's sort of like, it's, it's women like naked men, but, they don't know that they don't necessarily want to admit that they like making naked men because it's like we just live in an environment where it's just like a hostile environment where however you act or see each other it's just not it's 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 not really what i would consider to be that close to the way things really are naturally and so by seeing naked men in public it it really was sort of like like a a, a very powerful juxtaposition and then i started painting large size, large women. And I painted this one woman, probably my favorite person to paint was this woman named Freddie who had inoperable uh, breast cancer. It was interesting because like I, I painted um, her in Times Square once and I announced it as I often did at the time. Uh, I'm painting in Times Square and all these people came and they were like, Hey, I got my camera. I'm ready to take shooting, you know, and shoot your people in Times Square. And I was like, this is my model. This is Freddie. And is this, 65 year old woman with one breast was not in good shape. And they were like, Oh, listen, I'm it's great to see you, Andy. You know, I actually got to go. Don't really have much time, but just want to stop by and say hi, yeah. you know, and it, and it's sort of, uh, I, I think that, you know, I'm most proud, if you will, of the idea that by doing the work that I did in public, I, I without any intentions, challenged a lot of social mor mores and force people to recontextualize their relationship with naked men, naked women, large people, beautiful people, naked and sort beings, of naked beings. This work has sort of sort of exposed that we're all sort of the same, that there's a universality to being a human being and that that we are living in a world 
that often puts us in categories that sort of makes it seem like we're actually different from those people and we're different from those people. And by using art as a way of bringing nude people into the public space, it exposed that truly we are one, truly we are connected, truly we have much more in common with each other than the differences that we're constantly being sort of bombarded with ideas that how different we are. Yeah, more now than ever. I, well, well, well said. No, no doubt about it. So you started um, Human Connection Arts. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's really interesting. And tell us how it's going with that and where people can check that out and, and give us an update on what's going on. Well, just to get this part done, I'll say the website is humanconnectionarts.org. And, um, and I actually, I think one of the things that inspired me to make a, uh, to make a, a nonprofit, uh, as a, as an outgrowth of the work, uh, the art that I was already doing was that uh, I'd see a bunch of people were saying that what I was doing was like a gimmick, that I was like this artist who's using nudity to try to sell his work and bring attention to himself. And I really wasn't really my motive at all. Like I felt that I was really making a positive impact and trying to inspire people. And that's why I was doing this art form. And that I think really is what inspired me to, to make a nonprofit because now I get to say we paint naked people in public. It's a charity. This is a charity. We're serving humanity. And, and that's like kind of confusing to people because nobody would think of this as, as something that, that is charitable or as makes the world a better place. But I actually, believe it does and that's a, a great place to start um it, it, and 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 it does through the name itself which is using art to create human connection in a world that's very often divided we basically started running the events that i've been running um whether it was body painting in times square whether i was doing my uh, studio groups which i call human canvas paintings uh whether it was participating in in events like pride fest or the Halloween parade or the mermaid parade or whatever we were doing. We were doing not just body painting, but we painted a, a van as the freedom van of the organization and painted murals and, and, and other art projects. And, and we've done some showings, et cetera, you know, and so the, the idea was using arts in this way and just seeing how far we can expand it. And, you know, we've, we have currently a space in uh, Greenpoint, um, where we do different types of programs there. Um, but really what I'm on the cusp of doing is the newest project, which I think is probably going to be, um, you know, very interesting and compelling. It's, it's very interesting to me. Um, it's called Naked Theater. So we're going to start, I, I guess, either a theater itself or a theater company where we're going to do things that involve nudity, but not necessarily nudity with the body. It could be nudity in the sense that people are sort of exposing themselves and sharing themselves, making themselves vulnerable, at, you know, in order to be able to connect with other people. And so that's the idea of naked theater. And I'm doing it where I'm doing with um, working with dancers and singers and different kinds of performers and, and writers. And I'm going to do some of my own writing, which I've done quite a bit of. And people are going to perform. And when people perform, it's going to be allowing an audience to sort of see things that normally they're used to seeing where people are clothed and really trying to reflect on, on what that is and how, how much our, like, in other words, like we're not just stripping away clothes, but we're stripping away the social context that separates people, which is really the same work that I've done the entire time that I've been doing this body painting. But now we're doing it in a different format where there's performers and an audience with seats and stuff like that. We're actually doing our first naked theater um, performance on uh, Tuesday, January 11th. And um, I, I, um, I could promise you that it will be very compelling, very thought provoking, very interesting on many fronts. And uh, I think. Um, it would be something that would just be very interesting to attend. That's amazing. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. I, I want to say thanks so much for taking uh, the time. Very informative. I also want to tell you that 
one of your murals and 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 some of your mural stuff is really great. But one of my favorites is uh, where um, it is a mural painted. I believe it's like on a concrete ledge, and then you have one model laying on top, and then one painted model sitting in front. And it's interesting too that you talk about um, the lines. Because uh, when you first look at your stuff, you someone might say you're right. There is a, to- a lot of color. It's very interesting, but the lines are really prevalent, and, and I and they really do really do stand out. Now I'm 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 into tattooing. I don't know if you uh, follow that at all. I'm into tattooing. I have quite a bit of of ink on my body, and you know the lines in tattoo besides the color, it's it, it, it's very it's almost equal to the kind of thing you're saying. Uh, I can make that correlation, but uh, I want to say thanks so much. Uh, um, and we're going to put everything down in the description below. Um, this naked theater sounds very interesting, pretty wild, actually. Uh, uh, you have um, that coming up January 11th. You said we're going to put that in there. And uh, there's just a host of things. I mean, you could go to the website. You can go both, go both to um, andygollob.com as well, correct? Yes, you can also go to andygollob.com as well as humanconnectionarts.org. Yeah. Excellent. So I want to say thanks again. Uh, happy and healthy uh, New Year. And have a good holiday, whatever you, whatever you celebrate. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. Right, yeah. it. Pivotal moments that changed everything. People just get naked for Andy Gollum, but it's so much more.